Hi, this is Herb Spiro of the Dr. Max channel, and today I'm going to present a very interesting video about how to upgrade pretty much any Bowdoin style printer to Capricorn tubing. We're going to discuss why you would want to do that, and I'm going to demonstrate it on my ANET ET4. But this is not the first time I'm making this video. In fact, this is the third time I'm shooting this video, and it really falls under the rubric of the cultural saying that I think applies to every culture, and that is, man plans and God laughs. So the first time I shot this video, about three quarters of the way through, I found a technical surprise. I'm going to share that with you in this video. The second time, I forgot to turn on my fancy Rode microphone. And so now we're shooting it the third time. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. A good place to start this video is to discuss why you would want to upgrade to this Capricorn tubing. Um, it'll cost you, I don't know, 12, 15, 18 dollars, depending on the length of tube you need. Um, and for a printer like this, you need very little. One of the really nice things about the ANET design is that the extruder is on the carriage that moves with the z-axis. That means that this tube can be very short. If you look at an Ender 5 as an example, the tube is very long. This might have been from an Ender 5. The tube is much longer, and you would have to think that that impacts print quality if you're doing a lot of retraction. So what is unique about Capricorn tubing? What's unique is two things. Number one, all of these tubings have a Teflon lining to make them very slippery. Teflon emits gases when you heat it above a certain temperature. Just Google Teflon safety and you'll learn all about it. Well, that's the reason many of these printers are limited to 230, 204, 250 degrees. Because they're concerned that this tubing will give off gases when it gets too hot. That is specifically an issue with a printer that does not have an all-metal hot end. In printers that do not have an all-metal hot end, the Bowden tube goes all the way down to the nozzle. So it goes through the cooling fins into the heat break area and to the very top of the nozzle. So it potentially can get quite hot at the very end and therefore you want materials that are safe at temperature. Capricorn is a uniquely formulated PTFE tubing that is safe at higher temperatures. So I generally switch all my printers to Capricorn tubing just for safety. The second reason is Capricorn tubing seems to have an impact on stringing. And the reason is that the internal diameter of this tubing has a certain amount of variance that comes from the manufacturing process. In the Capricorn tubing, that variance, that variability of the inside diameter is less. That the more it is exactly the same as your filament, the less your filament will bounce around inside that tubing when it is extruding and retracting. That means those movements will be more precise and you'll get a better quality print. Okay, so in order to do this, we're going to need a couple tools. I'm going to need a hex wrench to get the front off of my printer housing, my hot end housing. The front on the ANET ET4 also holds the fans. We'll see that in a minute. I'm going to need to use a needle nose pliers to loosen the fitting or the coupler that holds the tubing in the hot end and the tubing in the extruder. And I'm going to need a very sharp knife to cut the tubing, because when you cut it, you want to go straight down and make sure you have a very clean edge. Now, how do I make sure this knife is sharp? Because this is just a utility knife I have around, is I sharpen it on sandpaper. This is just a sheet of 600 grit sandpaper. You put it on the edge of a bench or a table. You do this a few times, and then you have to be very careful because that knife will be quite sharp. To begin, I'm going to remove this housing. I'll try to do it in such a way that from one of these two cameras, you can see this. 
I have this wonderful little dish here from Harbor Freight that I use to keep track of things when I'm assembling or disassembling printers. Now when you take this plastic housing off, you'll see that there are wires connected to the two fans. There are also wires connected to the thermistor and to the hot end heater element. You want to make sure you don't break those. So this is a good time to look at this hot end. We have a heater block. We have a heat break. Um, we have what they call a radiator. These are uh, heat fins to dissipate the heat. We have a fitting or a coupler and we have the Bowden tube. Now, these fittings or couplers come in a variety of styles. Some are very narrow at the end and the tube stops inside the coupler. Some are wide at the end, these are two different styles, and the tube goes all the way through the coupler. The difference between these two styles is the size of the thread. This is the style that's used on the ANET ET4. And if we look here, we will see that the tube goes all the way through. In fact, this is very important. When we take and we disassemble this, we'll see that the tube goes all the way down to here. So we're going to need enough tubing so it can go all the way down through here. So it goes through this radiator, the heat fins, it goes through the heat break, the extension tube, into the hot end. And that's why the temperature that the tubing can handle is very important. So let's go ahead and disassemble this. To disassemble this, you press down on this little black ring and that will release the tubing. And then you can actually pull it out. Now at times, it's very hard to do that. And one of the reasons for that is sometimes a little bit of filament gets stuck at the very bottom when you pull out your filament. So there's a little melted filament holding the tube into the hot end. The way to resolve that is to turn the printer on, heat up the hot end. Um, I also find at times it's easier to take this out by unscrewing the coupler. Which we will do right here. And then pulling it up that allows you to get a better grip on the Capricorn tubing, on the Bowden tubing, so that you can pull it out. And you'll see in this case there was a little bit of filament stuck in the end. Now you also see there's some ridges on this Bowden tube. That's where this was locking in place. And you can see that it's basically around there. Okay, now we're going to want to do that at the back end also, but the technique is exactly the same. So now I can press on this little ring. When I press on the ring, this releases this, and I can pull this fitting down. So now we're going to take that fitting, and I'm going to take and slide that onto the coupler. But I'm going to make sure that I have enough of the tubing coming out that it can reach to the hot end, because I'm going to want to push it through. So we're going to insert this into the top of the hot end. It's going to go through the heat fins, and then it's getting stuck. And no matter how hard I push it, it's getting stuck. Well, folks, this is the surprise about the ANET printers. Let me show you something. I have here a caliper. So I'm going to take and check the size of this tubing. Capricorn says it's four millimeters, and it's coming up at 3.99 there. They're exactly four. So I'm using this caliper to check the filament size. Let's check the size of the filament that came with the ANET printer. 3.7, so this tubing is smaller than the standard Capricorn tubing. 
Now the inside dimension will need to be the same because our filament is 1.75, but the tubing is thinner and so the outside dimension is smaller, which is why this will not work because as soon as it hits that extension tube, um, the heat break tubing, that tube right there, it gets stuck. So it looks like I cannot upgrade this printer to standard Capricorn tubing. Now what I may be able to do is use one of this style of coupler where it, the tubing actually ends inside the coupler. Screw this in, but then I would have no tubing in here. And it, in all likelihood it would jam. So what I would have to do is cut off a piece of this tube so it comes to the very top and then jam this basically against that tube. And that might work, but it sort of defeats the purpose because I want to replace this tube because I'm concerned about fumes from the temperature. So I'm going to do a little bit more research. I know that some people are just replacing these A-net hot ends. I think this hot end actually prints very well, so I'm hesitant to replace it with other hot ends. Uh, Micro Swiss makes a hot end that looks like it would fit on here without any difficulty. And that's an all metal hot end. Perhaps a regular Creality hot end would fit on here. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to reassemble my printer with the existing tubing. So let's get this to here. I'm going to once again measure very carefully to make sure I have enough tubing there. And then I'm going to insert this in. Now, I'm gonna to have to put some pressure on this to get this to fit. I'm going to very slowly and gently turn the Z screw. And then I'm gonna put this roll of tape here just so that I can get some pressure on here. Make sure it goes all the way in. Press down right on here. Really make sure it's all the way in there. Now I'm going to screw in my fitting. Now you'll notice when I press this in, I had the Bowden tube pressed all the way down, even though the fitting wasn't screwed in yet. So when I screw in the fitting now, it's gonna put, make it even a little bit tighter, which is a good thing, because the tighter the fit, the less likely we're going to get jams on this printer. And that looks like we have a good fit now. So now it's a matter of just reassembling these parts. Now, because I've messed with this a lot, it is possible that it moved just slightly. So I would recommend re-leveling the print bed after you play around with your hot end, just to make sure everything is good. Well, folks, that was interesting. It ends up that Capricorn tubing cannot be used with the standard ANET ET4. Which really brings me to another topic, and that is I've used the ANET ET4 now for, I don't know, a month or so. And uh, when I did the initial review, my review was positive, but I was concerned about the quality of the firmware. They have a, had a firmware upgrade, solves a couple problems, but the primary problem of the firmware is not that it's proprietary, that it's not open source. I couldn't care less. My refrigerator has software that's not open source. My car has software that's not open source. What I am concerned about is they don't support the full range of Marlin G-code commands. And that means I have limited ability to tune this printer, to tune the extruder steps or to tune the hot end temperature calibration. And that limits my ability with this printer. On the other hand, I think the physical construction of this printer is one of the absolute best in the price range. Every time I work on this printer, I find it a delight. I think the uh, cabling is magnificent. I think overall, the fit and finish is really good. So if ANET could go upgrade the quality of the firmware and support the full, a fuller range, if not the full range of G-code commands, I would rate this probably the best printer at its price range. Right now, it's an average printer at its price range and really solid construction. It has the advantage that there's almost no assembly. So if you want a printer with almost no assembly at this price range with a good set of features, this is a good printer for you. 
If you're looking to hack at the printer or change it or modify it, you want to do upgrades, I'd go with one of the Creality Ender printers instead. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I sure did in this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, recommend the channel to other people, subscribe to the channel, and let's continue to learn things together.